do. Um, I just want to let everybody know that we will be recording this so um, so that we can uh, share and learn from it over and over again. Um, and I will ask that everybody turn their microphones off just to allow for a better quality uh, of meeting in this in this crazy Zoom world that we're living in. Um, I, I will just say one thing. It's crazy when you talk about Zoom, isn't it? As a boomer, it's crazy to talk about Zoom. I can tell you that. When this all started, I never thought I'd get used to it, but here we are. So uh, although we would all rather be in person, um, that this will have to do for us today. So I'd like to take a minute and introduce uh, Mayor Adrian Foster. Uh, mayor Foster is serving his third term as mayor of Clarington. Adrian and his wife, Deb, live in Curtis. Deb, Deb is an ordained minister with the United Church of Canada. Adrian has been formally recognized for his service in the community. I think we all know that, right? There's uh, honestly not an introduction required for, for Mayor Foster in our circle. He was awarded the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal in 2002, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal in 2012, and was presented with a Paul Harris Fellowship, sorry, that's my phone, uh, Uh, sorry, with a Paul Harris Fellowship by the Rotary Club of Curtis in 2008. Adrian has represented the municipality on a wide variety of boards and committees. Amongst other commitments, he sits as chair, of region, chair for region finance and sits as chair of the Canadian Association of Nuclear Host Communities and a board member of Alexcon Corp. But most importantly, he's the guy that's always on the other side of the phone. If you ever need to call him, he'll always uh, he'll always respond. So with that, I want to thank all, all of our guests and uh, and hand it over to you, Mayor Foster. Oh, Sheila, thank you ever so much. Uh, you know, thank you for the the bio. I'm really hoping that that is the most uh, painful part uh, of the uh, of the morning this morning. Whenever I do these, I, I, I start the uh, I start the presentations and I am looking for material. I am panicking that we don't have enough. And then I realize that I really, really need to go quickly because there is a whack of material. Uh, so so I am going to go uh, very, very quickly. You know that I always start these uh, things off uh, with a thought and I uh, try to make a point with a thought. So even pre-COVID, many, many years prior to pre-COVID, uh, we heard about Murphy's Law, which of course is, if anything can possibly go wrong, it will. Uh, apparently it was a fellow by the name of O'Toole, not, not the local homegrown guy that we're, uh, that we're proud of, but a fellow by the name of O'Toole came up with the observation that Murphy was an optimist. Um, and and I, I read about uh, a new one, Cole's Law. Does anyone know about that? Well, that of course is thinly sliced cabbage that's been marinated in vinegar. Now you'd all be polite. Mike, I can see you. Thank you for the chuckle. Uh, these are difficult. Um, for any of you who look at my Facebook page, uh, you will see that I'm constantly uh, putting up really questionable humor like that. But I'd make the observation that uh, when I when I put up posts that are speaking to a budget town hall, for example, that happened last night for Durham Region or COVID stats or whatever, um, the take up is very limited. Uh, if if there is something stupid, particularly if it involves a dog or a cat in it, uh, I get a significant number of comments and likes, and I I would suggest that we are all desperate to have a little bit of fun uh, after this uh, pandemic. So I'll leave that thought with you. And um, if, if you want to tolerate this, check out my Facebook page. Uh, and for those of you who are aiding and abetting, because I'm now getting people sending me really, really bad jokes, um, keep doing it. Um, I'm, I'm happy to inflict that on, on other people. So next one, please. Oh, here we are. So I was going to talk about financial assistance, things that had gone on, had a chat with Sheila about what we were doing today. And Sheila said, yeah, no, thanks. 
uh, you know, been there, uh, been there, done that. That's in that's in that's in the past. Next one. So I'm not doing it. That was four different slides, but I am going to talk about this. So I don't know how many of you uh, saw this picture. Uh, so, so this is, uh, I'm going to say two weeks old. Uh, this is Ruth Hamilton's bedroom, just in case you were wondering whose bedroom it is. Uh, Ruth lives in Golden, BC. That is a meteorite on her bed. And I would suggest that the pandemic is sort of kind of like this. Um, out of nowhere, who would expect a meteorite to come crashing through your house and land on your bed? Uh, she was in the bed at the time. So you've got to ask yourself, was she really lucky? You know, just a smidge over and it would have ended very poorly. Was she unlucky, you know, the damage to her house? Was she really lucky because she's getting a new roof and a bunch of stuff from insurance, uh, you know, on that? And if you you think about our business community during the pandemic, many businesses have done exceptionally well. Many businesses suffered damage, um, but they're okay, just like this. And there are a number of businesses that were laying in the wrong spot and it wasn't their fault because you cannot predict when a meteorite uh, comes. Uh, but, but this picture just sort of grasps, uh, you know, what we have been going through. Uh, and by the way, she is keeping the meteorite uh, as a uh, as a memento. Excellent place. You can look that up. It's a true story. I know sometimes the stories I tell, you know, might be stretched a little bit. Um, so st some statistics from the uh, from the Board of Trade. So these were put together by uh, your organization, uh, speaking to to life during the pandemic. So we've had about thirty new businesses opened, uh, three hundred and ten new jobs created. This week, East Penn opened, uh, 200 employees coming to their headquarters at East Penn. Uh, and I understand that they will be hiring about 50 more people. So this would, uh, this would go on top of that. And any of you that have been around town have seen, uh, interestingly, a significant increase uh, in, in the number of restaurants uh, and a lot of diversity in the restaurants. So as much as there have been business challenges, a big business opportunity as well. Next one, please. Oh, I did miss the other statistic, sorry, that was on that was uh, five businesses closed, uh, uh, job loss of under, under 12. Now we know, of course, that many people have, have been laid off. Sorry, Heather, next one. Uh, and this a little bit, uh, because I can't uh, get all of you off of my screen, uh, it is Zoom, uh, but again, some more statistics and look at these in a way that you can uh, take a look at, but how, how the business community uh, is, is doing with this. So no surprise, uh, you know, a 50% reduction in sales. Uh, if you look at that right-hand slide there, you will see some amazing things that the Board of Trade has done. And frankly, some of the things that the business community has reacted with, and we all knew that bricks and mortar uh, were, were going to be challenging, and we all knew that online, an online presence and online shopping was going to become increasingly uh, needed. The pandemic forced us to go in that direction. So I'll throw, and I'm gonna do this a couple of times this morning, throw the question out that um, we've been looking at surviving some of the things, and the Board of Trade has, has helped you with this, some of the things uh, that we are doing will help us to thrive. So do we need to change our mindset from simply surviving to how we take the lessons learned and how we move forward and how we thrive in the environment instead? Next one. Uh, construction. Uh, so this is a really interesting chart. You would see that uh, 2021, uh, you know, we have matched 2019. Um, which was the lowest. Uh, the interesting tidbit here is 2019, of course, was a full year. It was also a very, uh, a very low year, but this is for the first quarter only. Uh, so it'll give you a sense of, uh, of how busy it has been at the municipality uh, and development. And again, I, you, you don't need to see the numbers to look at that. So you just need to look around town. And I'll throw the question to you. Uh, how does the business community, so the developers clearly and construction industry are taking advantage of this. They've got their own challenges. 
is there a business opportunity for those of you uh, on the line today? Next one, please. Uh, power, so I'm gonna just go through very quickly uh, some businesses that are coming. So Powerline uh, Plus uh, uh, should be getting into the ground. They've been a little bit frustrated. So uh, again, Dom, I saw that you were uh, on the uh, meeting. Uh, you know, getting permits through has been a bit of a challenge and we are gonna be working uh, on that. Powerline uh, had that, uh, that same issue, but Powerline Plus, uh, I'm gonna call that infrastructure. So if you need to get uh, uh, lines in the ground, stuff in the ground, uh, they, they help the industry out with that. Next one, please. Uh, East Penn, I just mentioned. So this week, uh, 200 people uh, showed up for work in Clarington. So this is their Canadian headquarters. Uh, again, a shout out to the Board of Trade. Clarington was not East Penn's first choice. Uh, we became their first choice. Uh, that is the same uh, story with Toyota as well. Next one, please. Uh, Curtis Main Street, so we're the uh, motel. Uh, we, will, we will, if you're from Curtis or familiar with that, uh, we will mourn the loss of scoops. Um, uh, Foodworth has brought in Kawartha Dairy ice cream, so Foodworth may be the new, new scoops. So again, someone looking at a business opportunity, I'm not sure anyone is going to miss uh, the motel. Next one, please. Lake Ridge Health uh, redevelopment. So I can tell you that that uh, is uh, moving along. It is moving along in a very uh, positive fashion. You will be hearing more uh, from the foundation on, on continued fundraising for that. Uh, Durham Region made their largest financial commitment uh, to any project like this, we will be doing uh, many more as time goes by, uh, but Durham stepped up in a big way to uh, fund that. Uh, I can tell you the foundation, if any of you are interested, are also looking for uh, members on, on a couple of boards. Uh, so if, if you're interested in helping out and participating, uh, reach out to my office, which means I'm giving more work to Heather that she didn't know that she had, uh, but reach out and we will connect you to the right people. Next one, please. Temporary helipad. So if you hadn't heard a couple of years ago, the helipad was shut down. Uh, the existing helipad had been in place for decades. Um, Orange doubled the size of the helicopter, which doubles the thrust. Uh, it became very problematic for the residents. Uh, you may have heard that the residents uh, were up in arms. The residents have been great, but we had four by fours being snapped off. Um, insulation being sucked out of houses, uh, sheds being lifted and deposited on the street, uh, but uh, a, a temporary helipad, temporary only because uh, a helipad is anticipated on the roof uh, of the rebuild of the hotel, but that service is back in the community. Next, please. And the hospice. Uh, so a couple of things, watch out for handbags for hospice. That is coming out uh, in uh, November. Uh, fundraising opportunity. Uh, hospice will be making an announcement uh, very shortly uh, on when shovels are going in the ground. Uh, so the funds have been raised to build the building. Uh, they are currently raising funds to put stuff in the building. So it'd be nice to have chairs and beds and, and things like that. Um, I can tell you both on the hospital thus far, the hospice uh, you folks, the business community, have been absolutely uh, phenomenal. Uh, so thank you for that. Really, really important uh, needed things. And again, if you need information on any of this, uh, reach out to uh, my office. Next one, please. Uh, the other thing you'll see starting uh, to happen, so the police complex at uh, Maple Grove Road, uh, Durham Region is moving forward uh, with, a, uh, with another significant, this was always planned, uh, piece to that, uh, please complex. Again, a question with that presence coming to town, uh, what, uh, you know, what business opportunities, if any, exist for it? Now, I've got to tell you, and I can't resist this, uh, and I was hungry. I, I was going to complain that if I was doing this in person, you would have fed me. There would have been some treats, and here I am in the office on my own. So I did make a point of dropping by uh, Country Style Donuts and got a dozen donuts. Uh, so I, I was going to show you my donut. Their donuts are, are fantastic, uh, by the way. Uh, if you like donuts, you need to try their donuts. Um, you know, and I've got this in front of me and I just had a donut and I'm going to leave it at that because you know, it's 
probably politically incorrect to link police officers and donuts. You see, I can only see Sheila here and she's not smiling. So I, I know I'm in trouble. Next one, please. Uh, and then uh, we'll talk really briefly about the GO train uh, extension. Uh, in a few weeks, uh, you, you should, I hope, see a report from Durham Region. Uh, Durham Region is uh, working on a strategy to try to make sure that this, uh, no pun intended, stays on track. Uh, you can help us by continuing uh, to explain uh, to our MPPs how important uh, the expansion is. Uh, I think you've all seen the numbers, uh, you know, potentially a billion dollars worth of uh, private development. Uh, challenge with this is the province is looking for the, uh, the developers to fund the train stations. Uh, the, the costs are significant and the developers will tell you that they're not in the business of building train stations. They know nothing about it. Uh, so we are working through that, but huge, huge, huge uh, development. And again, I would encourage you to think of, you know, as these areas get built up, as we get the intensification, what opportunities exist for you and the massive amount of money that is going to be spent as they develop these. Next one, please. Uh, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, and uh, for anyone who knows me, <clears throat> people are rolling their eyes on that. So if you don't know me, don't start talking about the track and cars, uh, because I, I, I have an absolute uh, passion uh, for the spot. Um, and, and, and that exists for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it is uh, hilarious throwing yourself around on the track uh, as quickly as you can uh, in a car. Trust me, you come out with a stupid grin on your face. Uh, Sheila, um, you, you, some people don't share that experience. Uh, I, I forced her in a car. Uh, she's been there, done that. I think Andy Allison will agree, been there, done that. They never need to do it again. But uh, for people who enjoy it, uh, it is, it is a, a whack of fun. One of, one of the things that I was taught uh, when I was in financial services is you look at an organization that has unique capabilities and assets and unique capabilities and assets uh, can place that organization really, really well in a market. Uh, and the track is, uh, in fact, an exceptionally unique asset. Uh, so I can tell you that uh, I'm up on the track uh, in my Mustang, surrounded by exceptionally successful, wealthy individuals. And this happens pretty much every day of the week uh, during, the, during the season uh, in their you know, Porsches, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, uh, typically not uh, Mustangs. So the, the, the folks that we want to attract to Clarington and Durham region are already here. Now they're here having fun. Uh, you know, they don't want a sales pitch. So it's, you know, like going to Disney, uh, you know, and spending a day in Florida, checking out a timeshare instead of, you know, no one really wants to do that. Uh, but, but there are some really interesting business opportunities uh, that, uh, that exist up there. I can tell you that every couple of years I get uh, groups that look at the potential for expansion uh, at, uh, at Mosport. So a need for some sort of accommodation could exist. We are looking right now, and this is early, early, uh, and it may never happen, but is there the potential to expand the tourism node around Mosport? We're starting to have some discussion with the, with the region on that. Uh, Brian Bridgman uh, was up there. Uh, there is a really interesting um, uh, potential relationship between the ACE at the university uh, and Mosport. If you have not been to the facility at the university, Again, it is a unique asset, I believe one of two in North America, one of maybe half a dozen around the world. Uh, you'll be blown away at what they can do in that facility. And then, as I mentioned earlier, beyond exceptionally well-heeled, uh, successful business owners uh, coming frequently from out of town to the track, uh, you have, when races are going on, um, you know, billionaires and multi multi millionaires and their their track team. So I, I don't know what relationships, what business relationships uh, could exist between the track that we haven't fully explored. And, and there's a theme to what I'm saying, but I'll put it back to you. Um, you know, how might the local business community benefit from that? Next one, please. 
Uh, broadband, I'm going to speak really, uh, really briefly about that. There's me with a great big smile. That is Burkton. Uh, you might have read in the paper that we, we were taking a lot of grief because, uh, you know, the folks in Burkton were looking for uh, connectivity. Uh, interesting thing is, uh, this is rural wave uh, showing up in town. Uh, Bell Canada was there uh, a couple of weeks earlier. Uh, so Burkton went from not having access uh, to now having competition. Uh, in town, and that happened uh, within a period of a couple of weeks. Uh, Bell Canada alone will have about 98% of Clarington covered uh, with uh, broadband. Uh, we continue to work on that 2%. Competition is coming into town uh, as well. We are now looking at um, areas where the service is subpar, including cell phones. So in some of our new subdivisions, uh, and uh, again, please reach out to our office. Uh, the, the ISPs are focusing on houses. That's the low hanging fruit. This is where they, uh, where they get their income. Uh, we are still in some places under serviced uh, for commercial. Uh, let us know we're working on that. The ISPs are listening to us. Justin McLean has a carriage of that file and he's done a, a fantastic job. Next one, please. Um, the uh, senior leadership team. So during the pandemic and starting earlier, uh, many of you may be unfamiliar with many of our new department heads, uh, but we have had a significant uh, change over the last couple of years uh, in that leadership team. Uh, as Sheila noted, as, as we move forward uh, and can do this face-to-face, -face, there, there will be value. So uh, the most uh, recent addition to the tree uh, team is uh, Mariano Pri. He is our new fire chief. Um, you'll want to get to know him. Uh, many of you will have gotten to know uh, Ryan Wendell and uh, it, it probably more important to the business community, but Ryan is our, uh, is our new director of uh, planning services. Uh, so again, the opportunity. Uh, you may have heard as well that uh, Andy Allison uh, and this is with a with regret that I bring this to you that Andy has announced his retirement uh, to happen early uh, next year, uh, and uh, you know I I will uh, publicly thank Andy for what he has done. You will remember a speech that I I did a couple of years ago. I had a picture of Andy with a halo. He hated it, which is why I did it. Um, but we had had breakfast earlier that morning, and he made a statement saying, "It's not them and us; it's we." Uh, and we do need to work together, uh, you know, and, the, and I think the culture has shifted uh, at Clarington in, in that direction. And if it hasn't, or it hasn't shifted enough, we need to keep working on that. Sheila is going to hold my feet to the fire on that. Next one, please. <laughs> I'm going to go really quickly on uh, Darlington Nuclear. And if you look at the list of attendees, you will see how many people uh, from OPG are on this, which is an indication of their interest in the business community and their interest uh, you know, in our community as a whole. Uh, so for all of you listening, uh, OPG is an absolutely fantastic community partner. Uh, we cannot underestimate the impact that they have had on, on Clarington in the last little while. And I actually wrote notes so I'd get the, my notes in the, in the right order. But as you know, I'm incapable of uh, following my, my own notes. So the uh, refurbishment carries on. Uh, OPG's successful um, refurbishment program uh, has kept the nuclear industry alive uh, in Canada. Uh, and uh, for many of you, that sounds like hyperbole, but I can tell you, uh, when Tom Mitchell was the president, uh, there had been a, a history in the nuclear supply chain of being uh, late and over budget. Uh, the message got to the nuclear industry that if, if this refurbishment did not happen on time, on budget, uh, the province would be looking at the off ramps. And if this refurbishment didn't move forward successfully, Bruce wasn't going to, uh, that was going to be a huge hit, uh, potentially fatal hit to the nuclear industry in, in Canada. So OPG has done a fantastic job uh, that we should all uh, be proud of. Uh, it is interesting. We heard about energy. Yeah, and so Sheila's clapping her hands and, and it, is, it is warranted. Uh, we heard about, you know, all of the surplus electricity that we had. Uh, well, guess what? Um, you know, we are now very concerned uh, with electricity supply, uh, particularly 
uh, in the years when Pickering comes off uh, offline. Uh, so the refurbishment of those reactors, uh, safe, predictable, uh, low or no carbon, uh, is, uh, is, is phenomenal. And the impact of the number of employees, I believe it's around 1,800. And they've got about 1,800. I probably got the numbers wrong and Dietmar is cringing a little bit, sorry Dietmar, uh, on that. But so uh, you've got roughly the same number of people working on the refurbishment as, uh, as operating the facility. Next one, please. Um, isotope. So again, this is uh, new to uh, new to Clarington, but with the refurbishment, uh, Clarington will be uh, will be generating isotopes. I have no idea how this may or may not impact your businesses. Uh, and going back to just OP in general, what dialogue you may have had with with OPG or not. Uh, but many people don't understand that Canada uh, provides about 50% of the, the world's isotopes, medical isotopes, uh, tritium used in uh, in exit. Uh, signs. I'm going to the dentist later on today, which, uh, you know, this, I, I'm going to do this all day so that I don't need to go to the dentist. Uh, but the equipment was all sterilized uh, with isotopes. Uh, and we are continuing to see um, new targeted cancer treatments with these isotopes. Can you imagine the, the, the people that do this at OPG uh, and, and elsewhere uh, that are saving millions of lives a year. You, you just waking up every morning and this is your job. But, uh, you know, OPG and Clarington are part of this. Uh, so something to be immensely proud of. Uh, but again, you know, interesting, maybe opportunity. I don't know. This is uh, fairly new. There is an isotope council, if you're interested, that you might want to check out. They are fairly new too. Uh, next one, please. I'm going pretty quickly. I could talk about it. Councillor Jouart once uh, called me a nerd on this stuff because I, it, 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 the file is, and she, she meant it in the most positive, loving way. Uh, you know, but it is a fascinating, fascinating uh, file. So small modular reactors, and it was pointed out that we really need to call these small modular uh, generators instead of uh, reactors. If, if you haven't been following the news, the future of nuclear is... Uh, is the past of nuclear. So these are, are, are small nuclear generators. Uh, and uh, SMR is a modular that if you need to double the output, you can add two together or three together. Darlington's uh, license was just renewed uh, for 10 years as a potential site for a, a demonstration reactor. Those reactors would be larger small reactors, if that makes any sense to you at all, uh, and ideally placed uh, to replace a number of coal plants that are finishing end of life. So again, we're looking at decarbonizing. Uh, there are some very small reactors, and these are things, uh, it, and that's not what we would likely see in Darlington. Uh, the very small reactors are reactors that you would put in remote communities. So if you're reading about uh, the contamination of water uh, in Aqualua right now, uh, you look at the uh, tens of thousands, it's not tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of liters of diesel uh, that are burnt in our remote communities and that need to get up there, uh, the, the potential and ongoing environmental damage. Uh, there is tremendous amount of interest in, in looking at these. Um, for those of you who don't know, I think uh, Catherine was showing us uh, from Xterra is uh, with us uh, today. Uh, there are three potential vendors uh, that are being looked at. Uh, OPG has not uh, has not picked the vendor. Slightly different uh, technologies, uh, but these were technologies that were pioneered in the late '60s and '70s, um, pushed aside for the very large uh, reactors and plants uh, that we have built today. Uh, but really, really interesting. Canada has the potential to be a global leader uh, in this right now. So we, we have an advantage. Uh, we are moving forward. Uh, you, again, I don't know how this may fit in uh, to, uh, to your business plans. I can tell you we were on a call uh, yesterday with OPG on SMR. Sheila uh, joined us on that call and you know the, the message came out loud and clear. Uh, you know, how does the industry reach out to the local business community uh, to see what the local business community, what the host community may be able to provide. 
For those of you that were involved in the Port Hope Area Initiative, they did a great job of reaching out, uh, giving you the opportunity. I know that each and every one of you do not expect to get the business, just want the opportunity. Uh, and I think that we will see that uh, moving forward. And having one of the members, members vendors, <laughs> English is my first language, which is disturbing. Uh, one of the uh, vendors joining the Board of Trade, I, I think is a, is a great indication of that. Next slide, please. So we've got the new OPG headquarters that you just heard about. And it's top secret. You've seen renditions in the newspaper. And Heather, I hope you're pushing that button because we know that, that there is a delay. We tried doing something cute here um, uh, on that. Uh, and we have seen some renditions. And we're pausing for time. Heather warned me about this. She said, Adrian, don't panic. It will happen. Heather's panicking at this point in time. I can't see her. I can hear her through the wall. This is how we communicate. Does that slow it down? We are simply building the anticipation. Yeah, okay. Uh, we may not do that the next time. <laughs> you gotta love. So that was a Mission Impossible um, uh, clip that we embedded in. Uh, and basically it was, um, you know, I, I could show you the pictures that OPG showed me, but they would self-destruct. Uh, you know, one of those things I could tell you the secret, but then I'd have to kill you. Uh, OPG will be showing uh, the drawings of their new headquarters uh, coming. What I've seen is quite impressive. Uh, you know, the, the numbers are up to 2,000 jobs uh, coming to town here. Again, the question for you is how do you uh, benefit from that? But the greater question uh, is what businesses are going to want uh, to locate next to head office, next to OPG's head office? There is a huge, huge uh, economic activity uh, right here today. Next one. Uh, and this is, uh, is the uh, last slide, you'll be happy, and I always go a little bit longer, my apologies. Uh, and I, uh, I actually can't see uh, that slide. Oh, that didn't help. Uh, so you, you <laughs> now I can. Uh, so the tunnel, pessimist sees a dark tunnel, optimist sees light at the end of the tunnel, realist sees a freight train, and the train driver sees three idiots standing on the track. So I'm gonna go further. I, uh, you know, so the realist um, might actually understand that you need to get off the track. Uh, I think the question that we need to ask is how do we get on the train instead of just getting out of the way? And I'm quite serious about the, uh, you know, the opportunity to thrive as opposed to survive with COVID. Uh, and I'll leave two thoughts with you. So on a regular basis, uh, whether it's the hospital, the hospital, OPG coming, uh, to, uh, to town, the existing uh, refurbishment, East Penn. Um, how do we dig into the business opportunities? Uh, how do we make you know, better relationships? And I'm gonna throw it at you that uh, if there are people interested uh, in having dialogue, if we can bring uh, a task force together, uh, I will be delighted. Uh, and I know we can bring resources into that uh, to start exploring existing opportunities. Uh, the last, and some of you will be delighted to know that uh, Sheila's brought to our attention a few times uh, that there should be ways that we will be more efficient in Clarington. You'll recall a developer's round table a couple of years ago, and we will be moving ahead uh, to see uh, how it is that uh, in some cases with the permitting, I. Uh, can, can we reinvent or find a better wheel uh, such that it is easier to do business? So that, we've been talking about that for a couple of months. Uh, Sheila, you get, you get full credit uh, on that and we will be moving forward. But the, the question for you is how can I help you? Uh, how can the municipality help you? And again, uh, you know, the theme I think is uh, let's, let's thrive instead of just survive. And mercifully, I'm stopping right now and thank you all for this.
Well, thanks, Adrian. Um, your passion and your knowledge of our, the intimate knowledge of our community is, uh, uh, it is always such a breath of fresh air. Um, it's nice to know that our leadership is uh, taking such a strong interest in everything that's going on um, and your willingness to share is, uh, is much appreciated. Um, so there's just a couple of things. Does anybody have any questions for Mayor Foster? Uh, Mike, Chester? Yeah, I just have one quick question. Uh, Mayor Foster, the question was on the building activity update. Did, I just wanted to reconfirm with you, was that the first quarter update only? Uh, or was, the, was that including other quarters? Uh, that was first quarter. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. And I've got to add, the only reason I know that is, is Heather did the work and confirmed that for me. So I, I, I can't emphasize enough. I do this each time, but, uh, uh, but, but, but staff do a fantastic job. And Heather, if you hated this, Heather was responsible. But if you loved it, Heather was responsible too. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have a couple of uh, little things I wanted to, to pull, pull out. First, going in a race car at Mossport was fun for the first three laps. I didn't know I was going for 12. So therein, therein lies my fear, just so everybody knows. Um, on another note, and so, and Toyota, I just wanted to make a quick note about Toyota. We were in a meeting with, uh, with them the other day and they said that their first choice of communities was Turks and Caicos. And uh, <laughs> so I, we'll, we'll take that, right? <laughs> um, anyways, I want to thank everybody. Um, if you have been participating, uh, if you haven't and you want to, we're still distributing our rapid uh, test kit program, which is going really well. We have, I believe, close to 310 companies participating in it now and have distributed uh, well over... 30,000 test kits out to the business community to help us identify where there's asymptomatic uh, COVID cases out in the community. So if you're interested, just give us a call. Um, and I want to just uh, say we're doing this year, um, well, next year, actually 2022. Uh, as you know, we do this same format with uh, Regional Chair John Henry. <clears throat> And this year we've chosen to do that as a regional project in partnership with the Ajax Pickering Board of Trade, uh, the Whitby Chamber of Commerce and the Oshawa Chamber of Commerce. So uh, we would be doing that in February as a collective just to increase that collaboration and partnership across the region um, and how we can build the region together uh, and expand our, our scope outside of, of our borders. So. We're hoping everybody will be happy to participate in that. We're hoping for an in-person event for that. Um, and then uh, we want you to keep your eye out for a really exciting program that we'll be launching in partnership with the Ajax Pickering Board of Trade uh, and the Whitby Chamber of Commerce on a region-wide shop local campaign, which will be accessible to all of the boards of trades, chambers of commerce across the region of Durham. Um, but, but we've been sort of doing the, the lion's share of the work on it. So uh, watch for that to be really excited about some of the messaging that's coming out in that campaign. With that said, we're gonna try and show Heather and the mayor up a little bit and give you a little teaser of a video that, uh, that we've been working on over the last little while. So fingers crossed that it works. <laughs> yeah, I hope you have more luck than we did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, hi everyone. I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Jasmine with the Clarington Board of Trade. I'm the current marketing and communications lead. Uh, so I'm going to quickly share my screen and hope that the audio works. You'd think a few months into the pandemic, I would have had it all figured out, but it's a constant learning process. So uh, this is a video we've been working on for the past couple months, and we just really wanted to showcase the business diversity uh, that we have in our municipality and also just to encourage all its residents to shop local in Clarington because we really have everything you could possibly need right here in our hometown. So please enjoy. A campaign. 
um, Shop Local. Mm -hmm. Why don't we put us in it? That's a great idea. We've never done it because you know I never. <laughs> it were this internet's been horrible. Mm -hmm. Make somebody has their mic on. But you can mute, that'd be awesome. Hello and welcome to Brandom Kitchen and Bath Design Center. Clarington has the talent and experience supporting your home improvements. called Clarington Home for almost 20 years that it's worth repeating. You can shop the whole mall in one store. Bruce from Sargent Family Dairy. We've been farming here for 30 years in Clarington and we're very excited to bring our farm fresh dairy products straight to our community. Hi, it's Fred at Archibald and it's time to bring home the harvest right here in Clarington. in Bowmanville. We have everything you need to create your own delicious taste. Welcome to Watson Farms. Clarington is your best pick for fruits, vegetables, and locally made goodies. Hi, I'm Jim from Welcome Feeds. We wanted to let you know that all of your pet needs can be sourced locally in Clarence. Hi, my name is Gord Gill. I'm the owner of the Clarington Entertainment Complex. Come join us for family funded adventure in Clarington. I'm Brittany from Bragg Farms. You can find Bragg worthy products right here in Clarington. Chris from Man of the Craft Brewing. Clarington has some great independent craft breweries, so join us for a good time and some great beers. Experience exquisite customer service right here in Clarington. and you're very welcome to the snug. Come out and see us sometime. We have live entertainment. We have great food. Come out and see us and we'll show you around and give you a good time. And that's the video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Thanks, Jocelyn. Well, there you go. A little healthy competition, right? Uh, anyways, I just want to say uh, thank you to everybody again for, for joining us today. Um, 
I can speak on behalf of the team at the Board of Trade and say it's our pleasure to get up every day and do what we can to help support you and your partners across the municipality of Clarington and spread into Durham region. So make sure you reach out, uh, take advantage of our programming. And uh, if you have things that you'd like to see us do that we're not doing, let us know. We're always open to new ideas. So uh, Mayor Foster, thank you uh, for taking the time with us this morning. It was very informative and uh, very passionate as always. So we look forward to the next round. And I hope everybody has a great day. Go build partnerships. Thanks all. Be safe. <laughs>